Good afternoon and welcome once again to Digital Look TV. Joining us today is Ashraf Lighty. He is the founder of AshrafLighty.com. Ashraf, thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Okay, I've read recently you do not expect the U.S. Federal Reserve to move this year. Yes, so uh, since November, uh, I was basically among the school of thought that the Fed will not be able to raise interest rates at all this year, even if it's uh, at 25 basis points. Um, and part of the reasons is because I used to think that the economy was not going to be handled that. Uh, but now probably the economy is improving. I think one of the obstacles to that is the bond market. The yields are pushing up a lot. And uh, we're getting to a point, there's something, I, I look at ratios. If you look at the yield, uh, if, sorry, if you look at the stock to yield ratio, the S&P 500 divided by the 10-year yield, you will see the number is falling, the lowest level since uh, uh, two and a half years. That means that bond yields are a little bit too much relative to stocks. Right. And the question is, can stocks really support uh, or uh, uh, take this, uh, this hike in bond yields? But the most important thing, it's not whether they are going to do it or not. We think that even if they will do it, it will be so priced in mm. that it may not matter anymore for the US dollar. Okay, okay now, what they do is already priced in interesting but should they raise rates or right. should they not look I think that the uh, general question or the answer is that you should be able to finally normalize policy mm. it's been since 2006 Long time. Uh, that rates have not been raised mm. rates have been at this level since uh, December 19 uh, December 2008 mm. okay so Yes, it is time to raise. How do you manage to avoid a trouble in the market by raising rates? You signal the message via email, via telegraph, via fax. You make it no longer a surprise. Right. You make it so embedded that once you do it, it becomes buy the, buy the rumor and the dollar, mm. sell the fact. I and see. I think the Fed is, but I think the Fed is not there yet. They are not at a position where they have convinced that the market is going. Why is that? Because, uh, well, the job market, the situation is improving a little bit. Mm -hmm. But here's what something, here's what people do not pay attention to a lot. Inflation is important, but the Fed follows core PCE price index, which is a 1.2%. It, it does not follow CPI. CPI mm -hmm. is higher. Mm -hmm. So as long as the core PCE price index does not go from 1.2 to 1.5 and near 2%, right. uh, it will be very hard for them to raise rate. But what we have learned is that the dollar goes up ahead of a rate hike Indeed. or during the early stages in a rate hike. Mm -hmm. But this, even if they raise rates, and the Fed has told us they're going to be very careful, they're going to hold the hand of the baby the hand of the market as a baby. I'm not going to let you go to school alone. I'm going to walk with you to school. I will walk your hand. I will hold your hand. And when I raise rates, I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm probably not going to raise rates again. Because in past rate hike cycles, there were 7, 8, 9, 10, 15 rate hikes. The Fed said, once we raise rates, once liftoff, we're going to, be, we're going to wait a lot, a lot before we're going to raise rates again. Right. Why do they want to raise rates? Because they don't want to make a mistake and end up having to cut again. Indeed. So the fact that they will do it and they will stay, the dollar is going to say, really? That's all? Mm. And the market will be paying attention to the inflation in the ECB, in the Eurozone, mm. which was five months ago, minus 0.4, then it became minus 0.2, mm. now it's 0.3, and the ECB is expecting it's going to be 0.3, but the market is going to be surprised because I'm telling you, and I'm telling you, it's not going to end 0.3 this year. It's going to be 0.7 or 1%. And that's one of the reasons why the euro is pushing up on this prospect. So the Fed should raise rates, but you think it will not raise rates this year? I think that, uh, look, if you asked me this in December, I would have said there is a 30% chance. Mm -hmm. I think probably now I think there is going to be a 60% chance. Right. If, so I think the focus right now is not so much to predict it, but it's so much what will happen if they raise rates. And I will tell you, not a lot. 
and markets are, the stock markets right now, there is a formation of lower highs. Mm -hmm. The US dollar index has a formation of lower highs. Escaleras. Tomas mm -hmm. la escaleras para abajo. Right. It's a staircase that goes down. Mm -hmm. It's lower highs. And the euro has a pattern of higher lows. Mm -hmm. You be the judge. You okay. look at the chart. Let's talk about those escaleras, those uh, stair steps, euro dollar. What direction are the stair steps, stair steps going, up or down? Yeah, I think, uh, look, it's been a clear trend that whether it's Merkel scaring the market saying, I think the euro is too strong and the, and, and the market and the euro drops 80 pips. That's right. Or whether it is, yeah, or whether it is a gossip magazine, good cop, bad cop on Greece, the bad cop comes. Regardless of that, you know, I know, and I don't know if you know, but the only thing that has been dragging the euro has been bad news from the Greece. Every other piece of news from, from the eurozone economically mm -hmm. has been good for the euro. Mm -hmm. And lately, the stronger than expected retail sales in the US yes. was not good enough to, to bring down the euro. The market is telling you, you trade in the market and you trade what you see, it's telling you that the euro is going towards 117. Okay. Uh, so I think it's going to go to definitely 115, but I think we're going to see 117, uh, which is an important key. And that's why when, you, when I, you know, the book that I wrote, Intermarket Analysis, yes. you, lo this, you look at the DAX, mm -hmm. the DAX right now, is on a 30 quarter cycle. I'll talk about this more in the talk. Okay. It is gonna come down more. The DAX comes down, yield, bond yields, I think they're gonna go back towards 1% and above 1.2. Okay, And uh, what time frame? Oh, I think uh, this, this month. I think it's gonna happen again 1.2. Mm -hmm. And uh, a re an inverse head and shoulder formation in the Euro dollar. A similar thing happening in the bond yields. The dollar index is looking at a lower highs. We can talk the language of technicals. We can talk the language of the fundamentals. Spreads, German 10-year spread minus US. Not US minus German. German minus, German 10-year yield minus US 10-year yield. You take that chart and that chart was like this. It is breaking out to a four and a, four and a half year high. You take that chart, it is well correlated with the euro dollar. This is also, I'm going to talk about this today. So you look at the spread and it is showing you that the euro wants to go up and it probably can go okay. towards 117. Ashraf, correct me if I'm wrong, but you, I always get the impression that you tend to overlay technicals and fundamentals. Yeah. From a fundamental point of view in the eurozone at the macro level, are we at an inflection point? Mm. Or not. Right. I think it is very hard for the euro to go back to the lows of 105. And having said that, fundamentally speaking, it is very hard for inflation to go to minus 0.5. Once Draghi has convinced the Germans, once the Germans were convinced that they're going to do something that they didn't want to do, they better do it properly. And they're going to throw the kitchen sink, whether it's 60 billion euros a month, whether it's 65, whether it's 70, once they're going to do it, they're, they're not going to turn back. And the ECB has had a very good history with Trichet and with Draghi. They're very slow to react. But once they pull the trigger, you don't mess around with them. We were talking about Mr. Mario Draghi, who was able to move the euro, inject liquidity, by saying something without doing it, September 2012. Good trick. Now that he's actually doing it, you don't mess around with that. People can make fun of them. You know, the Anglo-Saxon world can make fun of the Eurozone and everything. But, and I think that we are seeing improvement in the PMIs, in the German PMIs, ZEW survey, IFO survey. You know, the Spanish economy, the man in the street may not feeling very good, the middle class, but the banks, the bonds, the, you know, uh, the IBEX, it's doing much better thanks to the liquidity, courtesy of the ECB. So it's very hard to imagine that we're going to go back to a crashing point in the euro, and I think these market fundamentals, you know, the spreads, the euro spreads, the spread between the Spanish and the German, uh, not only because it's narrowing because the Spanish are going down, but because the bond yields are pushing up. So, so all of these things, uh, I think they are making more of an even playing field mm -hmm. in the Forex market. Mm -hmm. We are not longer in March 2015, when you put a blind foil and you sell the euro and you buy the DAX and you, and you buy the dollar. Hmm. It's not like that anymore. Okay. For new traders, also for veteran traders, 
recommendations? What is your, how do you go about trading? Look, uh, I think you see what you're comfortable with. I think as far as technicals, you have to trade what you see. Do not complicate things. You use different schools of technical analysis. You use your trend lines. You use what is the previous support, now resistance, and vice versa. You use the key moving average. I use 50, 100, 200 okay. for daily, weekly, monthly. You, 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 you study your patterns very well, whether it's a head and shoulder, whether it's a reverse head and shoulder, whether it's a cup and handle, whether it's a double top. Whether you stick to, it's what you can see. The Fibonacci's are important. The trend lines are important. As far as the, stoch as far as the oscillators, mm -hmm. my favorite is the stochastics. Okay. But I'll tell you this, it is not what do you use, it's how do you use it. Technical analysis is, can be very scientific, quantitative stuff, that, but it is, it is not the, it's not what you use, it's how you use it, it's how you interpret it. And that is, my friend, makes it an art. Mm -hmm. Technical analysis, when you use it, is an art. When do you pay attention when do you give the importance that there is a positive divergence or a negative divergence? When do you pay attention to it? When do you ignore it? When do you pay attention that there is a doji in the candle? Mm -hmm. Is it supported by the stochastics? Is it not? Is it supported by a failure of the moving average? Is it not? It's that convergence. When you go to war, you're going to have all the arms with you. Right. When you go and trade, you have to have as many supporting elements. And for me, the perfect trade is something that I can spot not with the fundamentals, but with the technicals. Once I can spot it with the, with the technicals on the four hour, on the daily, on the weekly, mm. then I ask myself, what is gonna be the fundamental catalyst that is gonna make this happen? So technicals, fundamentals. Yeah. Okay, favorite trades at the moment. Where do you see alpha? Well, I'm not sure when is this gonna be transmitted, but right now mm. it's June 13, 2015. It's the same trade that has been helping me for the past two weeks, and that is long sterling dollar. Okay. That is one, one, one trade is important. I think Euro CAD, long Euro, short CAD, inverse, head and shoulder, it's going to take you towards 141. Magic. Ashraf Lighty, founder of AshrafLighty.com. My pleasure. Thank you so much for your time. Mucho gusto. And that is all from all of us here at Digital Look for today. Thank you very much for your time.